Okay, so today's lesson is uh, looking at typeface and looking at typography, and that's why I asked you to collect um, different types of fonts from magazines, just so you can analyse them, and that can go into your folder and help towards developing your corporate identity. Now, typography is quite an important part of graphic design. It's probably about forty percent of what graphic design is, and what we tend to do with typography is, is try to use the best sort of visual images to represent the product or service. Example being something high tech, you might want to choose as uh, metallic. Um, something that was to show speed. Um, you might want to print italics. Um, all sorts of things really to do with type font that we're going to look at. Now the other part is you do sometimes get questions on type fonts on the exam paper, and so we'll look at exactly what typography is, and then hopefully by breaking it down into its parts, when you look at your fonts and your typography you can explain and justify why it is your shop front name or your um, packaging name is done in a certain way. Okay, so we'll go with the basics first of all. Uh, I've just took this in image off the internet really, but it sums up pretty much what we need to know. And it goes by looking at all the parts that make up what a font is. Um, a font is a typeface. So that's what we tend to um, to look at it, but it's a font's more of a specific letter type and, and how you actually arrange the letters. So we go with the basics first of all. Anything that's uppercase um, is capital letters. Anything that's lowercase is lower letters. And anything that's sort of written like it is on here, where you've got uppercase letters and lowercase letters, um, basically that's what we call sentence case, because this is, is exactly how you would write a sentence. We usually use a rule of thirds on any sort of font because uh, that's how it's designed. So you can see that this word here is split into thirds. And the bits that stick above the line is called an ascender. And the bit that goes below the line is called the descender, which is over here. Now serifs, all the serif is, is basically where you've got the little add-on bits on the end of your drawing. So, or on to, when I say drawing, I mean your font. I'm just trying to do two things at once here as well. So, an example is um, any serifs are the ones that we'd find on there. Let's uh, do no fill. So, that's a serif. Um, you'd find serifs down there. Now, if they're at the bottom, um, what we tend to call them is a foot serif. So, that one isn't quite at the bottom there, but um, we've got foot serifs. On this one as well, so if I just click back onto that one, sorry. Okay, so foot serif is one that's there, and you can see them actually quite clearly on here on the P, um, a foot serif there. Right, other things then that we've got that you need to just be aware of anything that goes between the letters, obviously, this one calls it a crossbar, but sometimes we also call them just a normal bar and the bar puts the two things together so crossbar or bar that would be fine um, a short line added to the ends of the letters uh, are serifs any sort of typography that hasn't got these little bits stuck on the end is what we call sans serif so a sans serif is, is the opposite to a serif it hasn't got these extra tails and it hasn't got the extra beaks as it's put down here or spurs so you can see where the spurs are um, straight away and so that's an image that we'll probably put into our uh, folder as well, just to help us refer to what type of uh, sort of font that we're actually using. Other things that you may need to know, um, sometimes we call it, where it's got an I there, sometimes we call it an island. Um, if it's got a curve around the letters, like the C, yeah, then obviously we call that the curve of the letter. A continuous curve would be like we've got here, which is on the, um, the O shape, where it just goes in a continuous sort of curve with no joins at all. We'll talk about font sizes probably a, a bit more um, later on but at the moment that's pretty much what we've got here so other things that you need to know then um, spacing between the letters now the spacing is called kerning let me just delete these out of the way um, that's what I'm after there we go so we've got the actual spaces between them which is called kerning and I'll put these down on this one so that's the spacing between the letters and we'll look at how we can use that effectively in a second leading or leading um, refers to the distance between the base lines of successive lines that's where you write a type before it so the actual leading to do with this one would actually be 
um, the distance between that bit and the top of the face there. And where that comes from is back in the old days when you used to have to use um, sort of a printing block and all these letters were on little stamps and they actually fitted into a sort of an old head they used to do newspapers would actually have loads of little letters that people used to have to put in order then the spaces between them the lines between um, sorry the lines, spaces between the lines they were called, they were just literally strips of lead that they put in so that's why we call them lead in uh, and that's, that's the space between them and you can change the, the actual thickness of those depending on what effect you're after so you can see on this one the lead in will be smaller than what would be on the one above and that's all that means um, with successive lines. Same as we've talked about, and that's pretty much all you need to know on that basic one. Right, we'll just move on a bit more then. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this one. This one hasn't got any serifs, okay, because it's it's got no tails on or added lines onto the end. So this one is a serif, because you can see quite clearly here, it's got the things on the letters. So that makes that a serif. And any font that have got these on is a serif font. Any font without them, so for example this font up here which is Arial, Arial hasn't got any serifs on, so therefore it's a standard serif font, and that's how we divide them. Now when you get fonts like this that ha actually have got um, what looks or appears to be serifs on, if they appear to be handwritten, then we call them script fonts, so it looks like it's, it's a handwritten script. Depending on what you're using the typography for, will also depend on what type of, of font you're going to use just to start off with. So we, we talked a bit more um, about if I was to say distance if I actually uh, just tap that one a bit actually it's probably a bit too far That's I'm not sure if you let me do this so we'll, we'll see yeah everything will Okay, so if I was talking things about distancing, what I could do is space the letters so it gives an idea of distance. Let me just delete that one. Okay, so you can see the spaces between them, or the kerning, is smaller as the letter gets smaller. So it appears that the things that are nearest to us are bigger and the things that go away from us get smaller. And as it gets smaller, obviously the kerning between the letters or the distance between the letters actually shrinks. Okay, other tricks that we tend to use, um, if we just re refer that back to how it was, I'm just undo all that. There we go. Is to make things look um, as if it's going faster, a simple way to do it is just to make things lean and that makes it look as if there's movement to the lettering and the flow of the lettering. So that can be quite uh, important as well. Obviously, depending on whether you're using titles, titles tend to be bold. Um, anything that is in the title tends to be sentence case. Depending on whether you're using it on a website, um, some sites use different um, fonts. Some fonts are better than others. Um, Arial's usually the best one to use in all of them. Vidana, Georgia, Courier. Those are ones that you use on systems quite um, commonly. Impact, those type of things. They tend to be the ones without the serif. But if I want things to look old, and I want things to look um, traditional or, or as if it, there's a lot of age there, it's been going around for years then I'll tend to use some of the older fonts um, with the serif on so it makes them look more reliable so the Times newspaper for example because it's, it's appearing to a higher market or supposedly a more intellectual market might use one of the older fonts to, to show that it's a traditional sort of paper whereas something like, um, I don't know, The Sun or something like that might use um, very simple fonts in very simple sentence case to get their message across. So it's as easy as that. And depending on the colour scheme you use as well, will be with it. Something like this tends to make it more personal. So if it looks as if it's somebody's hand handwritten stuff, it makes it more personal as if the person's put their name to it. So something like Virgin, for example, it's written as if it's a hand script.